Hello friends, today we are going to discuss some preclinical methods for assessment of emetic as well as anti-emetic drugs. So in this case, so under this heading, we have the first model that is assessment of emetic and anti-emetic activity in dog or this model is also known as apomorphine induced emesis in dog. So in this case, the dog is used as a model because very few animals shows the emetic activity. So particularly bagel dog is used for this purpose. If you see how emesis takes place, so mainly the area in the brain which is responsible for the vomiting is the vomiting center as shown here in the figure. And this area is located in the lateral reticular formation of the medulla and if you observe this uh, area is uh, assessed with a uh, various part of the body so vomiting center received the input from many areas like chemoreceptor trigger zone vestibular apparatus then tractus solitarius and the gi tract so all these reflexes were received from the vomiting center and as a result the vomiting will take place. Now this process involves various receptors and this includes uh, in chemoreceptor trigger zone you observe the 5-HT3 receptors are there then D32 receptor are there. On vagal affronts you observe the 5-HT3 receptors and in the vomiting center you can observe the muscarinic receptor, the H1 receptor, 5-HT3 receptor. So, stimulation of these receptors may send the uh, reflux, uh, sense, uh, reflux message to the vomiting center and as a result, the vomiting takes place. Many drugs producing the emetics like apomorphine, xylazine, epicatechu, and many drugs, they are used as antiemetics like anticholinergic, antihistaminic, neuroleptic, prokinetics, 5-HT antagonists. So in this case, we are going to use the apomorphine hydrochloride. This is the structure of apomorphine hydrochloride. And this drugs was first synthesized in 1845 and was first used in Parkinson diseases. This is a non-ergolin dopamine D2 agonist. This apomorphine has been investigated as an emetic, as a sedative and the treatment of alcoholism and the treatment of other movement disorders. So if you see what is the procedure for this uh, anti-emetic activity. So in this case, we use a bagel dog it is a specific type of the dog which shows the vomiting activity, prone to vomiting activity. So we use some 4 to 5 bagel dog whose weights are in between 15 to 20 kg. Now this dog, before going for the assay, they were fed with 200 gram of uh, feed 30 minutes before the assay. Means 30 minutes before starting the Essay. Then after the dog were treated or injected intramuscularly with apomorphine hydrochloride and the threshold emetic dose has to be find out. And for this purpose, what, uh, what should be uh, carried out? After every five days interval, one has to inject the dose of apomorphine hydrochloride in gradual increasing order. So uh, initial dose when you are started with the apomorphine hydrochloride then initially what we have to do first you give 200 gram of uh, feed and then you inject the apomorphine hydrochloride 0 0.07 millimole per kilogram that is 22 milligram per kilogram body weight intramuscularly. Then again after 5 days, repeat the same process. Again after 5 days, repeat the same process. But after every dose, you have to increase the amount of dose 
but initial starting dose should be the 0 0.07 milli mole and this apomorphine has to be injected into the contralateral gluteus muscle in the uh, rat so in this case this is what the gluteus muscle in this gluteus muscle the apomorphine injection has to be given so by performing this experiment one has to find out the threshold emetic dose so what is the threshold emetic dose so threshold emetic dose is nothing but the concentration of the drug we showing the emetic episode it's called as a threshold uh, emetic dose then after the established threshold emetic dose for test compound suppose we have to screen a compound having emetic activity so we has to administer the unknown compound performing the similar dosing schedule and then find out the threshold dose for the unknown compound which produces emetic activity and that will be compared to the standard apomorphine. So overall in this uh, test four to six animals, these are sufficient to establish the emetic efficacy and potency of the test compound. So this up to this, the process, the model is used to find out the emetic activity of an unknown compound. Suppose we want to compare or find out the anti-emetic activity of unknown compound. In that case, we have to find out the anti-emetic assay. The dog with the threshold apomorphine dose, they receive various concentration of potent anti-emetic drug at given time interval prior to the apomorphine. So again, just come to this part here. Uh, as this schedule is developed, so whatever the threshold dose is there, which was find out, so every time one has to give the threshold dose and before administration of the apomorphine threshold dose, administered the anti-emetic drug. But in this case, the concentration of anti-emetic drug should be increases continuously. Then the evaluation is that this using this threshold dose, the relative potency of an emetic com compound compared to the apomorphine or if you have an anti-emetic drug, then the relative oh, anti-emetic activity is compared to chlorpromazine, which is an anti-emetic drug. So this is all about the screening of anti-emetic and emetic activity using the apomorphine-induced emesis in the dog. So uh, for such further videos, you just like, share and subscribe this video. Thank you.